Have you been considering making the move to Phoenix, Arizona, and you need to know what are some of the cons? What are the, some of the things that are gonna convince me to definitely not move to the Phoenix, Arizona area? Well, in today's video, I'm going over the top five cons. So if that's something that you're interested in, go ahead and keep on watching. Welcome back to Phoenix Living. I'm Nicole Baker. Today we are going over the top five cons, but before we get started, you know the drill. Gotta let you guys know I'm a licensed realtor here in this beautiful state. So if you've been thinking about relocating, go ahead and reach out. My number and email are popping up. I would love to assist you guys in any questions that you would possibly have, but if you're not quite ready to reach out yet, no problem, go ahead and subscribe. I post videos all about the relocation process. You know, what cities are the best to live in? What cities are this, that, X, Y, and Z? Um, I'm gonna be posting those every Monday and Thursday at 5 p.m., so go ahead and subscribe, but let's get started in today's video. All right, guys, my personal number one con of living in the Phoenix, Arizona area is going to be, drum roll, the heat. The heat is absolutely ridiculous. And honestly, all of these cons could be super dependent on where you're coming from, right? So keep all of these things in mind when it comes to the cons. For me as a native, the Arizona heat, Honestly, it's the it's the worst part about living here. It gets so hot. Average temperature probably in the summer, maybe like I would say like two to three months out of the year, it's going to be closer to that 110, give or take. And then maybe three months. So summer is just different here. We don't have seasons here. It's like, it's really about six months out of the year is summer in my eyes. So we're probably talking, it's getting closer to that 100 degree temperature, maybe end of April, May, June, half of June. Not It's like 100 degrees, not too bad. Then once we're in like end of June, July, August, hot very very hot be prepared for it it is definitely one of those things where i personally i'm already a homebody so it's not that bad but if you do enjoy going out a lot you can it's just really hot so like you could probably go swimming swimming is always a really good way to keep cool during these summer months um and then once you get kind of august end of august september starting to go back into that 100 degree temperature so not too bad again um, and it's really dry here. So I know a lot of people talk about that and granted I've only lived in really, really dry climates, so I can't really speak on it, but I've heard a lot of people say that whenever they're moving from kind of these, um, particularly back East where it's super, super humid and then they move to Arizona and they're like, oh, this heat's nothing because it's a dry heat. That might be you guys leave it in the comments down below. If you guys are coming from back East, is it true? Is it really, really like the humidity makes the heat 10 times worse over there. I would love to know because again, I've never even been there. Um, so I just don't know what that type of humidity is. I've really only been West Coast. So when it does get, in the summer times we do get a little bit humid. It's not too bad, nothing that I can honestly drastically notice. If anything, it's like a little bit more relieving for me because we finally kind of get that like break of like a little bit cooler at night whenever it's the monsoon season. But other than that, it's very hot. The cars are going to be hot. The AC takes forever to cool off, whether it be in your car or in inside your house, it doesn't matter. It's, it's going to be hot everywhere and you cannot take off as many clothes as you want, obviously, versus like people that are coming from colder climates. You guys can keep layering on. You just can't do that here. So you're gonna have to jump in to a nice pool on the afternoons or during the daytime to stay cool, which is always super fun. There's lots of cool water parks here too. So um, community pools, resorts, things like that where you can rent out a space. Um, there's always a way to cool off or staying inside, totally fine too, during those 
really, really hot summer months or getting out really early in the morning. Granted, it's still hot during the summertime. So even if it's five in the morning, it's still probably going to be almost 90 degrees. Um, but that's not too bad. You could probably get out there, get a good hike in or do some of those outdoor activities that you really enjoy, or just obviously avoiding all that summer heat that really pounds down on you. Once it does, like the sun gets to a certain height in the sky, you can do all your grocery shopping, all your fun activities that you want to do a little bit earlier in the day, obviously not 5 a.m., but kind of right when they open, avoid as much heat as you possibly can. There's definitely ways to avoid it. It's just not fun. Next con is going to simply be lots of traffic. Guys, if you're moving to the Phoenix, Arizona area, you know this kind of goes with two things. So we'll talk population and traffic. Those really go side by side when it comes to some of the big cons of living here. Um, traffic, the I-10 gets very, very busy. There's always construction for some reason. And I've heard that in multiple states. So that could just be us as humans thinking there's always construction and it's annoying. So we notice it more. Um, the things that you obviously focus your mind on bother you more. Um, so there is a lot of traffic on the I-10. I-10 is going to be that road that really like goes straight across um, the Phoenix metro area, leading down, I believe, into Tucson and kind of going all the way. I think, I think it goes through Texas and Florida and everything. So it is one of those highways or interstates. I'm not sure what the difference is, but it's a major freeway that really takes like so many different people in the United States from one side to the other. So of course, of course there's going to be traffic. That's just how it is. Lots and lots of semis on there because again, it is a major, major freeway that's leading people from one end of the country to another end. So you can definitely expect that. Um, when it comes to different seasons can affect the Phoenix, Arizona traffic. So during the winter months when lots and lots of snowbirds are coming down, so starting around October timeline, there's going to be definitely more traffic than there would be um, during the main hottest times of the year. And that is because we do, we are a snowbird state. So lots of people come down here from their wintry homes like Wyoming, like all of the, you know, a lot of people back East, uh, Michigan, things like that. They're coming down here during those winter months to get away from the crazy snowstorms that you guys experience during the winter. So obviously that's going to bring a lot more traffic. So keep that in mind. And then when it comes just to traffic in general, because we are very, very populated, if you guys hate lots of people, lots of population, you will not like the Phoenix, Arizona area. If you want to try and avoid a lot of the congestion, the traffic, and just the people in general, there are some areas throughout the Phoenix metro area and a little bit more, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a Phoenix suburb by any means, but if we're going out even a little bit more, there are some places that you would really enjoy that aren't going to be as crowded of areas for people that don't enjoy that kind of thing. Um, so keep that in mind if you guys do reach out to me and you say, Nicole, I don't wanna be around a lot of people. I want this to be my vacation home or I just don't like people, same. I will lead you to the right direction. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love people, but sometimes you just wanna get away, right? So I will lead you to the right direction on what exactly areas we want to be looking at for that kind of lifestyle. If you are close to that I-10, you're going to naturally get a lot more people and a lot more traffic because it is going to be one of those roads that are highways, freeways, whatever it's called, that are gonna take you from pretty much, you know, West Valley to East Valley. That's a road that I very much travel often because it is for my work and a lot of other people that do work in downtown Phoenix, East Valley, whatever it may be, they are also traveling on that road. If you are trying to stay within those Phoenix suburbs, but you wanna try to avoid a lot of traffic, there are definitely some areas that you wanna look into. Surprise might be a really good area depending on where you're working. Um, Peoria, North Peoria, Vistancia is a beautiful area, Anthem maybe. All of these areas that you can kind of take the back way and avoid I-10. I-10 is where all that traffic is going to be. Granted, all the highways have some sort of traffic, but there are definitely ways to avoid it. If you hate a lot of people and a lot of traffic, let me know and we will make adjustments on the home search.
All right guys, the next thing, and again, these aren't all necessarily my personal cons. Granted, the heat one definitely was a huge con of mine. Population, not a big deal. I've always lived in Phoenix, so just a lot of people around is like, it's normal to me. Um, granted, it's not too extreme. Like I couldn't live in a city per se. So yeah, population's not a big deal for me. Traffic, whatever it is what it is. When you have a populated place, there's going to be traffic. It's no one's favorite thing, right? But it's a, it's not that bad. This one, I, I battle between because it really is just, I guess, when you live in a place forever, you become desensitized to all the things that you have available to you. So that is going to be lack of activities, lack of things to do. I've heard that a lot as a native and talking to other natives, but I really think that's a native problem and not a Arizona problem itself. If I really step back and think about it, I can think about about a million other things that I could do in the Phoenix, Arizona, but instead, as natives, we like to complain about the heat and that's about it. So whenever you are moving here, you guys will have, you know, not these glasses that we have on that kind of like block us and make us think that we don't like it. That's probably the same thing that you're thinking about your state right now too. It's like, ew, or this is a perfect example. Sorry, people that live in California who never use the beach. That is the perfect example of how I feel about things to do in Arizona. Granted, it's hot. During the summertime, I don't want to do anything. So yeah, I guess there's not much to do. I could go swimming, but again, I don't even really like swimming that much personally. That's just, again, a me problem. But when it comes to things to do in Arizona, it's really what you make of it, right? So there's tons of shopping. There's tons of outdoor activities. You can go hiking. Like hiking in Arizona is like the perfect scenario, especially during those winter months because it's so beautiful and it's still a little bit warm, not too cold, no snow on the ground. It's a good time, right? You can also be, you know, an hour and a half, two hours north. You could be up in the pines and enjoying that kind of weather that they have to offer and those kind of activities, skiing, snowboarding, not too far from that. So there's that. Then you could be, I don't know, 30 minutes away and you could be in the mountains that are more deserty looking and then you could be dirt biking. You could do that stuff. We have um, salt, salt river tubing. I believe it's what it's called. I've only done it once, but it was really fun, really hot. Skin, definitely sunburnt, very bad. So keep that in mind if you do plan on doing that activity. But there's tons of lakes around here. If your friend has a boat, that's always fun. If you get a boat, that's always fun. Um, yeah, literally you could pretty much do everything. Fishing, golfing is another huge one. Sports of all kinds, right? Like all of these things that us as Arizona natives, speaking to myself and the imaginary group of people like my family behind me, we take for granted because we've lived here all of our lives versus you guys are coming in with kind of those fresh eyes and getting to experience all the fun things that Arizona really does have to offer, like football games, hockey games, baseball, spring training is another huge one that people love about Phoenix, Arizona. Tons of spring training fields here. So granted, Yes, I hear that a lot, not a lot of activities. During the summer, I could totally see that. It is really, really hot. No one wants to do anything, but we'll say seven and a half to eight months out of the year, you have perfect weather and you can do pretty much anything and everything. Last con we are going to be talking about is a con for some people. Again, it's so dependent on where you're coming from. My California people are going to laugh at this and just think it's ridiculous, but a lot of people do actually complain about the cost of living here. So that is why it's super, super important to do all your research in advance. I have a cost of living video that you guys can really go in depth on and see exactly what you can expect when it comes to all the pricing of what it's like to live in Arizona. I think has the pricing of Arizona and the cost of living of Air in Arizona gone up significantly since we'll even say two years ago, 1000%. Yes. The first house I ever sold was $195,000. Um, it was a 13,000 square foot home in 
it wasn't even like it's in Buckeye, but it's like this neighborhood called Tartessa, which is like another 10 minutes away with pretty much nothing around it. So point being, even that though, that is crazy. Cause that nowadays that exact floor plan is being sold for probably close to 375, which is crazy. And I totally understand, but that's not just an Arizona thing. Cost of living, unfortunately has gone up significantly in the United States in the past couple of years. So keep that in mind. Um, there are definitely States out there that will be a lot more affordable. Uh, can I name those off the top of my hand? No. Are they big cities? Probably not. Um, do they have the same amount of job opportunity and all of the things that Phoenix, Arizona does have to offer? Probably not, but I could totally understand. I want, because I've lived in a place that isn't affordable and doesn't have great um, affordability when it comes to housing and things like that. I totally understand how important and how valid your feelings are when it comes to cost of living. If you cannot afford to live in the area that you live in, I hate that for you. I don't want that. And that's probably again, why a lot of you guys are even moving or considering Arizona in the first place is because you are moving from a state like Seattle, like California, like, um, Colorado, <clears throat> all of these places that cost so much money to live in and you cannot afford it because you are simply house poor. If you do just get a basic home in some of these states or even not a basic home, worse than basic, like barely livable. It's like insane. So I totally understand. I want everyone to understand what the cost of living is before they move here. So like I said, check out that video. I think it's very, very important, has a lot of information that you definitely want to consider. And then also whenever we are talking, I'm setting you guys up like a hundred percent on exactly what to expect when you do move here and what kind of costs, specifically housing, you're going to be looking at because I don't want you guys to be house poor at all like that. Like I said, it's just not fun. So we want to make sure that we're budgeting, but just keep that in mind. Cost of living is a concern, but that is honestly a concern in the entire United States. Right, guys that's it for today's video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did go ahead and hit the thumbs up button it really really helps out my channel and then also if you guys want more content just like this i'm going to be posting every monday and thursday at 5 p.m so that way you guys can get all the content that you could possibly need before making the move out here and if you guys have questions that can't be answered in these videos which you probably will or you need help on relocating here i am a licensed agent in this state so go ahead and reach out my number and email are popping up i would love to assist you guys but until next time i'll see you later bye